Joining us via Skype to talk about the president's multi-phase plan for reopening the economy from real clear politics is political correspondent Susan Crabtree. Good to see you, my friend. Great to see you, Ginger. I'm super excited to talk to you about this because the president, wow, he has uh, the all-star team of advisors around him. I know he's got Arthur Laffer, uh, one of President Reagan's economic gurus. So, you know, weigh in on how you see the president making what he's already calling the biggest decision of his life, which is how to balance the health and safety of America with the economic prosperity and recovery of America at the same time. Well, right. I think it's a, a really uh, push-pull situation at this point. You see the really the emphasis uh, that the president wants on reopening the economy. He says people out there uh, who are protesting in Michigan, and now we see it even in our own state in Encinitas and in our communities, uh, they really want to get raring to go. It's really hard to see small businesses who have put their livelihoods. We all know somebody, I'm sure, their whole livelihoods, their heart and soul and their businesses in a free fall. And as you know, small businesses are the engine of our economy and they employ most people in America. So uh, he's very eager to get this, uh, the, to start reopening. The president has said there are 30 states that have less than one in 1,000 uh, cases of COVID. So uh, some parts of the country could open much sooner than others. As you know, Governor Gavin Newsom has resisted that uh, in part. He's saying that he has his own plan and he's trying to be extremely careful and that we're not over the peak yet. But places like San Luis Obispo County and Ventura County, uh, they say that they are over their peak and they're seeing less cases in their hospitals. So uh, they should be able to carefully, carefully reopen. Yeah, it's really tough to make that judgment call for the entire state, given we have very different population. We're spaced out very differently and our needs are different. So to penalize perspectively one group uh, based on the whole is just not what you know, Californians, much less Americans, want to hear right now. That's right. Well, we're the biggest uh, state, one of the biggest states in the country and have one of the biggest economies. So I think it's very complex. And Gavin Newsom has a huge decisions ahead of him on how carefully to do this. At the national level, we are seeing a bigger push and there's a huge conflict brewing that I've been covering today and last week over this uh, two, $350 billion more for small businesses and a so there was supposed to be a deal in the works, and we've heard from President Trump and uh, the leaders in the House and Senate that they were very close to a deal to get this approved because the uh, small business uh, loan program went uh, bank basically was insolvent last. They ran out of funds last week, four days ago, and so we're waiting now to see if there is a deal. Uh, there's some conflict between uh, Democrats and House Republicans on 150 billion dollars that governors um, and states want for their counties. They say that there's a huge deficits um, that they're experiencing because of the unemployment insurance. But some Republicans in Congress believe some of these deficits were there to begin with and were not COVID related. And they're calling that a red line that they will not agree to. Uh, the bill, which we hope we'll see Congress pass this week, uh, Senator uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell set a vote for it uh, to start the process tomorrow. Uh, but we haven't reached a deal yet. And as you know, in Washington, nothing is final until everything is final. And we're trying to see if they can get a deal. There's uh, 150 uh, billion more for the states that Democrats want, but they uh, Republicans have conceded to $75 billion more for hospitals that really need it around the country. Wow, big numbers, big needs, big decisions. I listened to your podcast and you also spoke about uh, mail-in ballots. And so I'd really like to have you back in the next few days so we can expand upon that because that's going to be a topic of conversation going into this presidential election year. So uh, let's get you scheduled again, Susan. Be well. Good to hear your perspective as always. Absolutely, Ginger. Thanks for having right, me. Thank you.